Thank you, Governor, and good afternoon. I'd also like to thank Secretary Heffernan and Catherine Hornby and your incredible team for your hard work to revise this budget and for your ongoing work to help our communities of our Commonwealth and to obviously provide the resources for us to fight the, the COVID-19 in our Commonwealth. The funding allocated in this budget proposal will continue to support communities and families throughout our Commonwealth as we work toward COVID-19 recovery and will build on our ongoing partnership to fund critical programs and municipal services. We also recognize the incredible importance of our local governments and vital roles that effective municipal services and supports play. This budget proposal will maintain local aid to cities and towns, and it will do so without raising taxes. We recognize how absolutely critical local funding and aid is to our communities. And for that reason, this budget will ensure that cities and towns receive no less than their fiscal year 20 level funding for unrestricted general government aid, also known as ARGA, and Chapter 70 education funding. All in all, this calculates to a Chapter 70 education investment of $5.284 billion, an increase of nearly $108 million over the fiscal year 20 spending, and an UGA total investment amounting to $1.129 billion. Upon taking office in 2015, our administration also launched the Community Compact Program, which champions municipal interests across all of our executive secretaries and agencies and develops best practices across our state for and with municipalities. This proposal recommends an additional $4 million to support the community compact related uh, programming and initiatives and uh, obviously provides an important tool as cities and towns uh, look for creative ways and innovative approaches uh, to providing services in a COVID environment. Also included in our proposal is an additional $3 million for district local technical assistance and $4.75 million for the public safety staffing grant program, which will provide Massachusetts communities with access to funding and resources necessary to support the health and well-being and safety of their residents. COVID-19 has revealed limitations in cities and towns technology and IT services and has highlighted the critical need to bolster resilient and reliable technology systems for municipalities. Furthermore, many workplaces have continued to pivot to remote operations to ensure the health and safety of their employees, and with that adjustment comes an increased need for advanced technology, security, and digital services. This budget proposal recommends $135.6 million in fiscal year 21 spending by the Executive Office of Technology Services and Security to support the Commonwealth's technology needs and initiatives, including managing a new cybersecurity operations center which provides 24-7 capabilities, uh, monitoring capabilities of systems, implementing a security incident event management software platform, and continuation of EOT's information governance program. And as we continue to move forward in this new normal, reliable, consistent, and safe technology systems are integral to the Commonwealth's recovery and continued development. While COVID-19 has brought forth unparalleled difficulty for families, individuals, and businesses nationwide, as the need for self-isolation and social distancing has increased, one of our most vulnerable populations has been left particularly isolated, and that is our survivors of sexual assault and domestic violence. Our administration and the governor's council to address sexual assault and domestic violence has worked collaboratively with our community partners and stakeholders to ensure that survivors and their families had access to services and supports necessary in this time of crisis. Our budget proposal recognizes this critical need and the proposed investment of $82.8 million will support and strengthen our administration's ongoing efforts to strengthen and improve sexual assault and domestic violence prevention services as we see our safety net for this community across our Commonwealth. 
This is a 2.4 million or 3 percent increase over fiscal year 20 and nearly a 30 percent increase from fiscal year 15. This critical SADB investment will support $46.8 million in funding for DPH to carry out domestic violence and sexual assault prevention and survivor services and emergency and tr transitional residential services for victims and their children. This includes $6 million to support the statewide sexual assault nurse examiner program as well as $1 million for a grant program that focuses on promoting healthy relationships for teens across our Commonwealth, amplifying the Respectfully campaign. $1.6 million for DCF to meet the needs of families involved in domestic violence situation and the Sexual Abuse Intervention Network. And $31.2 million for DHCD to provide shelter, services, and housing assistance for individuals and families who are victims of or at risk of dom domestic abuse at home. On behalf of our entire administration, I'd like to thank the advocates and community leaders who have committed themselves to ensuring safety and security of survivors over these past months and your ongoing uh, partnership and ongoing work in the months ahead.